Okay, this is part five, and we're on the page 60, and the date is October 17th, 1955. The time is now upon the earth when great changes must come in response to the descent of light, and there is no time but now, for man must come to an understanding of his soul powers. They alone can save him from the result of the misuse of such powers. Full recognition must be given to the light and to its meaning in relation to the earth, to its, to its peoples, and to the forces which either unite or divide them. There is a simple and reasonable way for man to contact his good and to make use of it. This way was presented by the Master Jesus and is still being shown through every available avenue by those who serve him. The light descends to illumine the consciousness, but it can only descend through evocation and invocation. It exists and contains within itself all the great livingness displayed by Jesus and expressed through his so-called miracles but it exists only to the degree the individual consciousness has been able to conceive of it or has hitherto existed only to that degree. The earth is mine and I shall come to take it is the promise of the Holy One and now is the appointed time. October 21st, 1955. We have spoken about the approach of mankind to the new era the expanded consciousness. Our mission is largely to create for man channels by means of which he may make that approach. This is reflected through many channels, some as yet little known, but which will have their full effect as the consciousness becomes receptive. The harmonizing use of color tone is one of these. Soul conscious awareness means that in the upper levels, man expresses that which he is as yet unable to grasp in his mind processes as they apply to his physical living. Man has a higher mental body, which is known as his solar being. He has also a physical and emotional body, which responds to the higher mental at times, though only very rarely in an incarnation. In other cases, a contact is established which permits the individual to carry out impressions given him by the soul or solar being. He helps to strengthen the link between the two expressions. October 28, 1955 We have given you our reactions to a few of the major colors of the spectrum. We know a specific shade of blue to be very sustaining. We had evidence of this and came to feel an inner strength as the result of reflection upon that tone or color. No activity took place other than a receptive, concentrated, conscious effort to know why we responded thus to a particular color or tone. It meant the use of our highest mental faculties, specifically that of concentration and meditation. Every quality of being has a vibrational harmony or an attunement with all radiation, which sets up a specific or movement throughout the etheric body of the earth. Therefore, if an individual responds harmoniously to a color tone, he is at one with its vibrations, and they may be used to change his physical vehicles, adapted to the higher radiations, and also to alter his emotional response because of his vibrational alignment with their harmonies, and to expand his mental powers through the impact of the energies contained within the specific vibrational radiation. November 4th, 1955. It is now necessary for man to accept that he is a being capable of superconscious or supernatural awareness. His denial of this truth will only place him beyond the point where help may be given him. 
When he accepts his God-given potentials, he has then become receptive to the qualities inherent within them and is ready to change his vibrational response to the upper levels of being. How is this done? By becoming responsive to the elements contained within the radiation of light. The light descends as it is invoked by man's acknowledgement of it and his receptivity to it. He may invoke it through prayer or supplication to the supreme light, the God with whom he has been taught to worship. In this way, he comes slowly to an awareness of greater light of which he is a part. He may invoke this radiation by a process which is deep within his soul and which causes him unconsciously to vibrate or harmonize with the qualities emanating from the supreme life. The elements contained within the radiation of the light are imperceptible to the eye of man. True, he sees color in the forms of nature, hears purity of tone and musical compositions, and is uplifted to the degree that he is responsive to them, but he does not know that both are the result of the reflection of the harmonies of being on an octave higher than that to which his present consciousness has reached. There have been individuals in every age who have been aware of the divine elements and have given to man their interpretation of them in the arts, but their true inspiration is not known. November 11, 1955. In order to begin to live on the plane of higher mental response, man must believe that such a condition of being is possible. Man, for the most part, believes in a divine presence one that rules over him in great wisdom and great power. But he, has, but he is not as yet ready to accept that this divine presence is within his self and may be reached by searching deeply within the planes of his being to find the good for which he longs. We were exactly at this point in experience when we were incarcerated and for the most part entombed within the earth itself. We believed in a God, but a God afar off, one who might or might not listen to our pleas for relief from the horrors of our incarceration. It was not until we had begun to believe in the manifestation of the divine powers that we came to see all things are possible unto him who believes. It was then that we began our testings of the powers of light as it irradiated our darkened chambers, appeared to us in color, tone, and form, became, as it were, our Savior, offering redemption from the confines of our prison walls, but by a means we had never before dreamed of and which could only be tested as reality according to our belief in such means. The radiation brought its own enlightenment. We were then touching higher mental levels sufficiently to begin to experiment with the color tones as they came to us. We perceived that they uplifted the consciousness, causing physical changes as well. We then carried our experiments further and became conscious that we could transmute and transform our vehicles of manifestation until they became light enough to penetrate even the denser portions of the earth. We had thus found a common meaning, a, a common meeting ground with the dense particles composing the earth matter and could amalgamate with them, not as physical beings, but in our higher mental capacity as beings of light. How had we done so? By accepting the fact of the color tone harmonies, by making them a part of us, by concentrating upon their powers until they became real to us, and then by putting them into action. The foregoing is a formula for the redemption of the consciousness of man if he will but use it. What man does not accept as his reality, he cannot know. We discover that the light undifferentiated and unformed in the solar substance or the sustaining force from which comes all manifestation that the principal qualities of being are inherent within the light, that the degree of its manifestation, i.e. radiation, is based upon the degree of its acceptance, 
or the channeling powers of the consciousness using it. That nature forces are responsive, each according to a degree of receptivity. For example, a tree reflects the quality of strength according to its acceptance of solar substance as to quantity, aspires to become a tree, and unconsciously uses a substance-making quality of, quote, treeness, unquote. I don't know why the screen is turning green like that. Okay. We discovered also that the qualities of pure being or undifferentiated substance are inherent within the mind of man, that as he aspires to them in his consciousness, they appear as the powers inherent within the Godhead. The spirit within him knows and acknowledges the qualities which are, in truth, the principles of being. As he applies himself to the acceptance of his spiritual qualities, to that degree they become manifest in form for his use. To dwell upon the qualities of love, wisdom, faith, peace, purity, justice, and freedom is to become one with their radiations. each of which has a specific color and tone, and to achieve harmony with them. The present age of manifestation is one in which man must find himself as a being of light. He must use the qualities inherent within to build for himself an, en an enduring world, one in which he may manifest in harmony with the laws of the universe, and thus preserve for himself a continuous form and place of manifestation. November 25th, 1955. Having progressed to the point where we accepted the radiations as the qualities of being and tested their potentials as color tone, we became aware of specific changes within our own physical, emotional, and mental reflections. We became aware of increasing strength of dynamic powers which seemed to sustain while they irradiated the mind forces and of a perception of pure being within our auric reflection. Physically, we seem to become much lighter, much more easily movable, requiring less food because we were apparently absorbing subs sustenance from the solar substance. It was not until we had reached a high degree of radiation that we became aware that such changes were taking place, and not until we noticed an effulgent, E-F-F-U-L-G-E-N-T, effulgent, whatever that word, blue aura, or etheric transmitting force around one another that we came to know what we had achieved. We then came to acknowledge that we had, by our many testings and experiments within the qualities of the radiation, become capable of wielding the forces of light within and from our own center of being. We began to direct them into the cave-like surroundings which was our place of abode. We literally projected beams of powerful electric blue into the earth walls. To our amazement, we found the earth responding, becoming resilient, malleable, and dissolving into sparkling particles of light before our very eyes. The next step was to discover why this was possible and how our knowledge could be used. The evidence was before us that man must come to change his consciousness of the earth upon which he dwells in order to accept the degree of light or solar substance which is now being projected into his ethers. December 2nd, 1955. Our fourth stage followed as a direct result of our discovery that we might project a certain specific color tone into dense material and receive positive results therefrom. The test color tone, electric blue or blue-green, is of a dynamic quality of being, highly energized and capable of projection when the trans oh okay, sorry. When the transmitting channel is on the exact wavelength or vibrational response with it. 
The form or shape in which it is to be projected must be clearly visualized and held at the same degree of radiation as the wavelength. The projective powers must come from within the solar forces of the being projecting them and must be directed with force and sufficient powers of intuition to envisage a result. The walls of solid matter may be broken down in this manner, but the transmitting instruments must be capable of entering the denser substance in their light vehicles or auric being in order to create the form desired. This method of entering the earth's substance is now possible, but further experiment must be made. It is, therefore, our premise that the earth itself is soluble, taking any form which may be projected under a given set of circumstances. The magnetic drawing of the earth's substance by means of a specific degree of radiation is possible and preliminary to the rec to the recreation of the planet upon which men have their being. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you.